Hey everyone, welcome back to Lower Keys Living. Hope you had a great Memorial Day weekend. This week's edition, we are going to take you along during the almost 20 hours of time we spent on the water over the holiday weekend. We got a lot of our favorite activities in from snorkeling trips out to some of our favorite locations and lots of time on the water spent fishing. We had an epic day of deep drop fishing for tilefish and grouper, went out solo fishing for mahi, landed this nice bull, which you'll see later on in the video. And of course, if you've watched us, we know there's not a weekend we don't spend with our dogs out at the sandbar. So stay tuned, join us for about 20 hours of water time compressed into 10 minutes. So Saturday morning, we had company coming over that evening. I wanted to head out, get some fresh fish for dinner that night. Um, there were reports that everything in close were smaller, schooly sized mahi. So I headed out to the edge of the Gulf Stream, almost 22 miles south of the American Shoals Lighthouse and spent a lot of time searching for weed blinds, any sign of life. And I was out here at this point almost three and a half hours and just didn't even have so much of a bite, was struggling to find any sort of a weed line. Finally came across this small, and you can see just broken weeds, nothing solid. Um, especially you hear all the stories about all the sargassum, just not seeing those massive weed patches down here. And no, I did not line this shot up with a rainbow between the fishing poles intentionally. Anyway, out here found this thin weed spot, had a massive strike. My line was just sizzling off. This started off on the port side of the boat. It swam all the way to the other side, pretty far out. Had to work it over the other lines I had in the water. And at this point, I am about five, six minutes into bringing this mahi in. I almost thought it was either a wahoo or a barracuda, by the way, it took off with the line. So I was really careful on the drag so I wouldn't lose it. Finally saw it jump a few times, realized it was a mahi. You can see I pulled the gaff down, knowing, having seen the size of it, that it was going to be a keeper mahi. But still fighting and it is heading off and you can see it all eventually ends up out in front of the boat, even though I've got the engines running at idle, keeping us moving forward to keep the other lines tight. Um, but this one put up a heck of a fight. Turned out to be a really nice bull mahi. So I was excited about that. Um, and you'll see also once I take the hook out of this fish's mouth, once I land it, this was that pink Billy Bates feather lure that I talk about in a lot of my mahi videos. This thing has just been crushing the mahi this year. Again, today I was running a deep diving lure and a blue Billy Bates, but this one again was on the pink feather feather lure and I'd say 80% of the mahi I have caught this year have been on these pink feather lures. Got a few on the deep drop deep diving lures but this pink lure I think I'm just going to finish out my year running these. So again this is that bull mahi this is Saturday after about four hours of fishing. Nice one. This guy actually ended up measuring just over 40 inches so not a trophy fish but certainly a keeper and a nice size bull mahi in the boat. You'll see one thing I always keep handy on the boat. This guy had swallowed that lure pretty well. Hook was pretty deep. So I keep my long reach um, hook pliers handy. Makes it easy to get the hooks out of just about any situation. Um, pulled that right out. And again, see there is that pink billy bait feather lure. Um, I can't recommend those enough. And no, unfortunately, you're not sponsored by Billy Bates. Wish we were, but that is just a fantastic lure and one I suggest you have on board if you're going for mahi or tuna. Again, there it is, nice bull mahi in the boat on Saturday. And you'll see I reset the lures, everything made one big turn past that same spot again. Um, again, they're a school fish, so I was hoping to pick up another one, but nothing in here. Already out on the water for well over four hours. Lots of squalls around, even saw a few water spouts. So it got to the point where I decided it was time to pack up and head in to the dock and start getting ready for dinner. The next day on Sunday morning, we headed out about 20 miles out to some favorite spots to deep drop for snowy grouper and for tilefish. We did almost 20 sets in seven hours. 
and ended up with one small tilefish, wasn't even worth filming. Um, and that was it after a whole day. On our final pull up, we decided it was time to head in and this guy followed our baits up. This is probably solid six and a half, seven foot bull shark. So it was an exciting way to end a non-productive day. And he ended up getting what was left of our base after our long, what I would call very non-productive day of fishing. But this was just amazing to see, to watch this guy coming up and along the boat. This is also why we're out here a lot and you'll see them come up out of nowhere to boats when we're out here. And there'll be times where we've got friends and my daughters will be on the boat, it'll be hot and they're like, hey, can we jump in the water? This is exactly why we don't recommend that because you have no idea where these guys are and they do frequently come up to check out what's on top of the water. So again, this was the most exciting part of our Sunday after seven and a half hours out deep dropping with only one small tile fish <laughs> to show for it. But that was our bull shark. And of course, if you know us, there is not a weekend we don't spend out at our favorite sandbar. This is Memorial Day morning and brought the whole family out, dogs included. Daughters had friends out with us. Busy day. Of course, our favorite spot we had practically to ourselves again. Out further in the distance is Marvin Key, and that's where this boat's heading. And there were dozens of boats out there already in the morning. But again, had our sandbar to ourselves. And of course, the entire family came out and the dogs. It is their favorite activity. They love being out here. So enjoyed our sandbar. And then we finished up the evening. It clouded over, cooled off a little bit, perfect snorkeling weather and it's completely flat water. So we headed back out to the American Shoals Lighthouse just for an evening swim and snorkel. Whole family came out with us and just enjoy the crystal clear water. There's a nice small hogfish, saw a number of those around. The debris piles around the lighthouse, we've seen a number of octopus around, especially this time in the evening, they come out and start exploring, start their food hunt. Didn't see them today, uh, but we have seen some nice size octopus out here on this debris pile. And this is nice. We decided to come out here as opposed to Lou Key because the water was so flat. Holiday weekend, we knew Lou Key would be packed with boaters. Lots of people out where we were able to come out here. There was one other boat anchored. They were having their dinner out on their boat by the lighthouse and just hanging out. Looks like they had finished up snorkeling when we came out here. So had this whole snorkel experience all to ourselves. One thing I did notice, this place used to be packed with those purple sea fans. Not a lot around. I'm not sure we've had some storms coming through, but the, a lot of the big sea fans were just gone from this area. Um, one of my favorite things out here, and this is one of the few places I see them frequently, are these flamingo tongue cowries. They're part of that cowrie family. And they've got these cool tiger stripes on their shell, which is actually their skin they wrap around it, which is what keeps them so clean. But they're beautiful. They eat some of the polyps on those sea fans. Uh, but this is one of the few places I see those flamingo tongues. Here, I have a little kid me. I can't help but play with these sea anemones. I slow this down. I'm sorry I didn't film it in slow motion. I just slowed it down on the playback here so it looks a little jumpy. Um, but I love just touching these bright orange spiral anemone and watch them snap back into place. It's like a little scene out of Avatar, the way they just close up and pull in. And yes, it's the kid in me. Got to touch these and watch them snap in. It's the simple things. She just makes me smile. One of the things I always find fascinating, just the contrast in sea life. On this side of the lighthouse, it was just stacked with what I call murderer's row. These are some massive barracuda. The biggest one was easily four and a half feet long, just big and thick 
all with their teeth going. And they were stacked up on this side of the lighthouse, almost waiting for evening. They start their evening hunts. And then we swim all the way to the other side of the lighthouse. And we find this delicate pair of butterfly fish. These are some of my favorite fish out on the reef. And gives you quite the crazy contrast between those big, massive, aggressive barracuda and this delicate little pair. And with that, it was time to pack up, head back in, finishing up our Memorial Day weekend with a beautiful evening on the water. And yes, that ladder is severely bent. That's a video for another time with some really costly, expensive bloopers that I made out on this trip out to the lighthouse, nearly losing a drone and obviously losing that ladder. Thanks for joining us. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we will see you next week on Lower Keys Living.